namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Buddham saranam gacchami Dhammam saranam gacchami Sangham saranam gacchami Dutiyam pi buddham saranam gacchami Dutiyam pi dhammam saranam gacchami Dutiyam pi sangam saranam gacchami Tatiyam pi buddham saranam gacchami Tatiyam pi dhammam saranam gacchami Tatiyam pi sangam saranam gacchami So good evening friends, welcome to this uh, Wednesday evening Dhamma discussion and uh, meditation practice. And I hope you're all able to, uh, you got the mailing I sent out on Monday with the attachment for the sutta that I wanted to go over uh, tonight. And that is the uh, Chula Sunyata Sutta or the Lesser Discourse on emptiness. Now we've, we, we hear the term emptiness quite a lot by, especially in uh, maybe Zen Buddhism and Tibetan Buddhism, especially they talk about emptiness, emptiness and, and so on. Uh, but in the Theravada tradition, uh, the, the actual word uh, emptiness or sunyata is not used uh, that often. But in this particular sutta, there are two suttas, the uh, Lesser Discourse on Emptiness, which is the one we're going to uh, go over tonight, and the Greater Discourse on Emptiness. But I find this, uh, this the Lesser Discourse on Emptiness uh, to be the, the more uh, clear and precise about the topic and also uh, that the average person can uh, try to uh, get their head around or their, <laughs> develop their awareness <laughs> to. Uh, so, this uh, it starts out that uh, the uh, Venerable Ananda came out to meet the Buddha one evening, as they normally uh, do. And uh, then the Venerable Ananda uh, mentioned to the Buddha, Venerable Sir, I have heard this. Face to face, I learned this. I now remain fully in an, a dwelling of emptiness. Then he asked the Buddha, did I hear that correctly? Did I get that right? Did I learn it correctly? Did I attend to it correctly? Did I remember it correctly? And then the Buddha's reply says, yes, Ananda, you got that right. You heard that correctly, you learned it correctly, attended to it correctly, remembered it correctly. Now, as well as before, I remain fully in a dwelling of emptiness, just as this uh, pavilion of Migar's mother is empty of elephants, empty of cattle and mares, empty of gold and silver, empty of uh, of men and women and householders, monks and nuns, there is only this non-emptiness, the singleness based on the community of monks. And that means all the monks were sitting around in this pavilion with him in quietude. And that was the only thing in his mind. His mind wasn't thinking about cows or chickens or pigs or you know, the king or the queen or uh, anything else or the past or the future, it was fully 
you know, concentrated in the here and now, in the present moment, with whatever was directly available to its senses. So the quietness of the of the evening uh, pavilion uh, and, and and so on. So basically, it was uh, meaning this. Uh, you know, it's empty, that present moment was empty of any other worldly kind of things, only what was present around you, uh, that was the, the experience of the emptiness. And then the Buddha says, whatever disturbances that would exist based on uh, the village, based on uh, men and women being around, being based on animals in the forest and so on, and that is empty. Uh, and so this entry into emptiness accords with actuality, is undistorted, is undistorted in meaning, and pure. So basically it was a state of pure awareness uh, that he was uh, talking about. And I've mentioned that quite a lot too in the uh, in uh, my meditation in instructions and so on, and uh, or the talking about, uh, you know, the, the levels of consciousness uh, developed through mindfulness meditation. Now, having said that much, then the, the Buddha says, you know, he goes, he attends to the perception of earth. And while he's in the perception of earth, now this is probably the earth casino. So he's entered into probably the first jhana of the earth casino, whereas only the perception of earth is in the mind and it's empty of anything else. And then he goes on to, uh, after that, he says, uh, he, he goes into the, the sphere of infinite space. So these are the formless jhanas. And uh, not, uh, you know, attending to anything else, the mind enters into infinite space. And then he goes on to the infinite of consciousness and then the, the state of nothingness. So these are the uh, formless jhanas that he's got in his mind into. And in each of those states, it, it is empty of everything else. It's empty of any other sense perceptions except that perception of, uh, you know, the infinite space, infinite consciousness, uh, nothingness. Now, the, <clears throat> the part that I like so much about this sutta is, uh, is in this next uh, section, And then the, the Buddha goes on to say, and Ananda not attending to the perception of nothingness, not attending to the perception of neither perception nor non-perception. Uh, the person attends to the singleness based on themeless concentration of awareness. I love that term, themeless concentration of awareness and his mind takes pleasure in that finds satisfaction settles and indulges in its themeless concentration of awareness and what does that mean the themeless concentration that means there's no objective in the mind is only that awareness that state of pure awareness there's no thoughts in the mind uh, the mind is not uh, recognizing any objects uh, or anything. It's just that uh, that state of pure awareness, but it's not a, a void. It's a, the awareness that's still based on the nervous system. The mind is, is still concentrated in the body. And that's what he goes on to say. This is the part I like uh, the most about this uh, sutta, because that's the way I also practice. And I've been teaching you for all all these times is about, you know, using the body as the a basis for getting centered and grounded uh, in the in the nervous system and to 
gradually let the awareness unfold into that. So, uh, so the, then the Buddha goes on to say, this themeless concentration of awareness, actually, I like to call it concentrated awareness. So he's actually using the term concentration of awareness. And that's what I've also mentioned many times, concentrated awareness. So that means the, concent, the, the mind is concentrated in the body, but there's still awareness. That means there, there's still vibrations coming through the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and the skin, but the mind is not thinking about them, interpreting them, or even perceiving them. And so there's that kind of emptiness of just uh, uh, vibrations. And so whatever disturbances would exist based on, uh, or discerns whatever uh, is fabricated and mentally fashioned is, is impermanent, subject to ceasing, and thus seeing, that means he gets insight from that, from that state of that uh, awareness, that pure awareness, uh, the insight arises about the nature of suffering. Uh, suffering is the creation of objects. Suffering is the attending to, you know, the various uh, individual uh, objects and then getting attached to them. But this state of abiding in that pure emptiness uh, brings up the insight. And so the mind is released from the defilement of sensual pleasures. It's released from the defilement of becoming. It's released from the defilement of ignorance. And re with release, there is the knowledge released. And he discerns that birth is ended, the holy life fulfilled, the task is done. There's nothing further for this uh, world. So anyway, but I, I wanted to again go over and uh, just point out the, what, what I feel is the most significant part of this uh, sutta. And there is just this non-emptiness that is connected with the six sensory spheres. So that means the mind is still, is not disconnected from the mind. It's not emptiness. The six sensory spheres are still intact. And what does that mean? That means there's hearing vibrations coming in through the ear. There's sounds coming in the ear and there's hearing. There's visible vibrations coming through the eye and there's seeing. There's smells, tastes, flavors, uh, sensations coming through the skin, but there's just those bare vibrations without the mind creating perceptions and objects out of them and so on. So it's remaining in that present moment uh, awareness. And further, it says, connected with the six sensory spheres, dependent on this very body with life as its condition. That's very important. To me, that's the most important phrase of the, of the, the Buddhist teaching in that, in that uh, development of awareness. Dependent on this very body with its life as condition. That means the body is still alive. That means the nervous system is still working. So the nervous system is where we experience the world. That means vibrations coming through our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin, and uh, through the, our, the unconscious mind as well. So, but it is not creating dualistic uh, perceptions and it's not getting going out to those objects and creating attachment, aversions, and dragging up the past and the future connected with those objects as what happens in our ordinary sort of consciousness. So, uh, thus he regards that emptiness as whatever is not there, whatever remains 
he discerns as present, this is. And so this is the entry into emptiness, and it accords with actuality, is undistorted in meaning, pure, superior, and unsurpassed. And then the Buddha goes on to tell Ananda, whatever monks and Brahmins, others who in the past entered and remained in an emptiness, it was pure, superior, and unsurpassed. They all entered and remained in this very same emptiness that is pure, superior, and unsurpassed. Uh, so that is how you should train yourself. We will enter and remain in the emptiness that is pure, superior, and surpassed. This is what the, the Buddha had said, and gratified the Venerable Ananda was delighted in the Buddha's words. So the, what my take on this uh, sutra and the way that I've developed my own teaching was based on this, uh, that the, you know, getting centered and grounded in the body and becoming in tune with the subtle vibrations in the body, that is a, a level that's beneath our thinking and conceptualizing. And, uh, and one gets that way through the practice of the four foundations of mindfulness. One uses the breathing to get into the body and then by uh, letting the mind uh, through that concentration on the breathing and the, the hindrances subsiding, then the mind, uh, you know, feels all the, the, vi the body vibrations and the subtle uh, vibrations of, you know, the cellular uh, vibrations in the body. And by keeping the attention on that, whenever sounds are heard, you, you attain that state where the mind is not uh, thinking, thinking is stopped. There's just sound vibrations, there's visible vibrations, smell, taste, uh, touch vibrations are, you know, coming and going, but, you know, the mind is not uh, thinking or reacting to that. And that comes through having been grounded and centered, you know, in the body and making that the vehicle of it, that you can, and the practicality is that by developing this mindfulness of the body, even in your daily life, you can train yourself by moving a little bit more slowly, a little bit more mindfully. You can, uh, you know, keep that, that present moment awareness. It's really the present moment awareness, knowing what you're doing, but being able to maintain that connection with, you know, you know, subtler vibrations. And then as well, uh, you know, having the insight and wisdom to know that everything that comes through us, the whole world is just vibrations, basically. And it's the mind that takes the vibrations and creates objects out of them, creates, oh, a certain vibration. Now, that, that's a man, a certain vibration, that's a woman, a certain vibration, that's a cat or a dog or a tree or a house or anything. That's all created by our conditioned perception uh, and so on. Uh, so, of course, when we're active in the daily life, we have to move in that uh, awareness of, you know, recognizing objects. So there's no harm in that. But anytime one wants, you can develop the ability to withdraw the attention inside and get regrounded to the sensations and, uh, you know, uh, come back to that subtler level of present moment body centered awareness. And all of that can come back very quickly. And you can uh, maintain that kind of uh, that state of uh, emptiness. Of course, it may not be as perfect as the Buddha was explaining in the Sutta, but depending on how much practice you had and how much concentration you have, it can be uh, done, uh, at least to uh, a certain extent. Uh, and the fact that you know that it's happening that way will help you in your daily life not to get caught up so much in, uh, 
you know, whatever it is you're, you're pursuing, you know, any attachments and aversions and things like that. So, and, and that is why the yoga, that's, this whole thing is, th this reason why when I learned yoga, I, I saw the, the value in it. And doing the deep breathing and doing the yoga exercises where you, you keep the body in a good state of flexibility and the life force moving so that whenever you pause and stop, you can feel that uh, very easily. I mean, you can with practice, you can develop a state where you can almost at any time you want uh, be able to tune the mind into that subtle vibration because now you know it's there. If you didn't know it was there, uh, you won't know it. But, you know, our doctors or anybody else never tells us about it. They don't say the inside of, <clears throat> inside of the body is full of vibrations. No, they just say oh, they're these organs and the sick and this and that, you know. Uh, but no one's ever taught us to actually get in touch and feel the, the subtler vibrations of the body and use that as a, as a grounding, you know. And that's why I have people do the yoga and the breathing before we meditate. And most of you who have been doing that with me, you, I think many of you feel that that does uh, help you to then when you sit to meditate, uh, be able to have some more feeling in that way. So, but you know, th this aspect of the, you know, talking about emptiness and all these other jhanas is not really talked about too much in this this way of the emptiness about the being, uh, you know, still connected to the six senses and, and the life force in the body. But that's why I like this particularly, the Buddha mentioned uh, that, that this state of emptiness is connected with the six sensory spheres, connected, not disconnected. People talk about the jhanas, you become disconnected from the senses. No, that's not true. I mean, you could get yourself into those jhanas, but it's not what the Buddha was talking about, especially in this sutta. Or going into the, the, the uh, formless jhanas. But it's still connected with the six senses and dependent on this very body with its condition. With, its, with life is its condition, and the life are the subtle vibrations. You know, the blood pumping through the body, the, the oxygenation going through the, the blood, and uh, basically the electrical energy of, of the body. That's the, the life condition of the body and of the present moment. And it's always there, and it's not that difficult. I don't know, people make a big deal out of it. They go, well, I can't feel it, I can't feel it. Okay. But if you, if, you, if you make it as a practice, then you will be able to do it uh, at some point. And doing the yoga is, is an absolute help or any other practice like Tai Chi and Qigong, any type of practice that's getting you connected to the, uh, the subtler life force vibrations of the body is going to be a great help in that in developing the meditation. So friends, that's what I wanted to uh, explain uh, about this sutta. Now, if any of you have a, a question maybe based on that, then uh, you could, let me see what's in the chat uh, box. It says, the five strings of sensuality as described by the Buddha As, as a confining place. The five strings of sensuality are desire, for sight, sound, smells, taste, uh, and body sensations. We have desire for it. But when you're in a state of concentration, that sensuality is temporarily cut off. But that doesn't mean the sensory vibrations are still there. The sensory vibrations are still there, but the mind, because of the concentration, and overcoming vitaka and vichara, which is our, th our thinking, uh, then uh, the, the thoughts about them are cut off. Uh, but in meditation, the thoughts are cut off, but the vibrations are still 
there, but the mind is not latching on to them as this is pleasurable, this is the painful or anything else. It's just, it is what it is. Uh, it's just a vibration of, of life force. And that's the way we interpret it or try to experience it. And that's beyond the, the thoughts of me and I and, you know, self and, and so on. Uh, after it, according to the Sutta, after the state of neither perception nor non-perception, there seems to be another stage, themeless concentration. Is there any gap between these two? Uh, well, it's you've lost the connection to the body in that uh, formless jhana. Uh, so the uh, you, you know, it's very difficult to, to talk about all these these very uh, highest, very highest states. Uh, but you know, the Buddha is talking about it, even that he didn't wasn't paying attention to even the state of neither perception nor non-perception, because uh, you know he he got back into uh, the body uh, and the four foundations of mindfulness to maintain that connection to the life force vibrations uh, to to gain this particular type of abiding and emptiness because it's something you can do uh, much of the time. You can't go into a formless jhana and do anything really. You're stuck. But somebody like the Buddha, an Arhant, who's in that state all the time, they can still move around. The Buddha could move around and talk to people, but he still had contact to that very deep uh, level of vibration of that emptiness vibration deep down. But he could still uh, communicate uh, and do things, but, he, but whatever he wanted to, he could let go of that. He could just turn that off and any type of thinking and abide in that uh, deeper state of emptiness. Uh, so the, when I think of emptiness, I see all things as energy empty of any solid. Yeah, that's also true because you're experiencing the vibration. It's, you're experiencing the the vibrations of the objects, not the objects themselves, the energy of the objects, a sound vibration of a bird chirping is an energy vibration. And it's going through the air, air and coming into your ear and your mind turns it into a bird chirping. Otherwise, it's just an energy vibration. Same with a cat meowing or my voice right now, because you know it's Bhante Rahula and you're forming this idea that he's speaking. Uh, that the mind is creating that. But if you are able to go into this deep state of awareness and go underneath all of that thinking, then uh, you wouldn't be thinking about, uh, you know, the, the dualistic, uh, you know, that it was Bhante Rahula, you know, it was just sound vibration, just hearing, hearing, seeing, seeing, smelling, smelling, tasting, tasting, feeling, feeling, thinking, thinking, but without any objects being created out of that, just the, the, the pure vibrations. That's really the, the thing. And, you know, it's a, it's a training. And by having a good intellectual understanding of uh, what it is and how the state is and, and how to reach it, you, that's what the whole practice of Dhamma is, about how to avoid the things that block our ability to directly ask, access that state of uh, pure awareness, it's always there underneath our, you know, active uh, mind.
Uh, what is singleness in this context? It's the mind resting in the present moment. That's what singleness means. It's resting into the present moment. Now, if you're in jhana and you've developed that kasina or the, the, the whatever the object of the jhana was, then uh, that object would be the singleness in the object. But with the practice of awareness, there is no single object like that because you're not in jhana or you're in vipassana jhana. So you're, you're, you're connected back to the nervous system. So you, all you're feeling is vibrations, uh, which are connected to the body. Uh, so that, that is singleness. That's what I call being, uh, you know, in the present moment. The concentration is the mind resting in the present moment. That means it's not going out anywhere. It's resting in the present moment. That's what I call concentrated awareness, or what the Buddha mentioned uh, in the, the sutta there. The, okay. Uh, so when my cat screams at 3 a.m., any suggestions? Well, <clears throat> You could say just hearing, hearing, uh, and it's just uh, hearing, but your mind, because you're attached to your cat and you might be thinking it's sick or, you know, it's being scared by a mouse or something, and then you, <laughs> you start thinking about your cat uh, and then you get worried about it, or maybe it's being attacked or a better example, a baby, you know, mother has a baby, right? So she hears the baby crying, naturally she's going to, you, she can't just say hearing, hearing, right? She's got to get up and she's got to go see what's happening. Or if there's a fire in your house, you can't just say heat, heat, or, you know, you may die. So, uh, you know, you have to use a lot of common sense when you are, uh, you know, doing this kind of uh, uh, practice, but most of you are probably not going to get into that point where you're totally cut off from any type of uh, perception. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, the, the Buddha could easily come out if he, you know, he, he saw a forest fire and he was in that state, uh, he would be able to, uh, you know, come out and, you know, just wouldn't let himself just burn up or something. <clears throat> so. Okay, friends. So uh, I think... Uh, it comes to our end of our discussion. I know it uh, might have been a little bit, you know, new for some of you or made a lot of sense. But the, the main thing is you can't understand these things intellectually. You have to practice. And only through the practicing, especially the body-centered awareness and the vipassana type of, uh, you know, moment-to-moment -moment awareness and following, I mean, really following the four foundations of mindfulness. That's really... <laughs> The meditation, the four foundations of mindfulness are, are is what leads the mind into this uh, uh, this uh, level. You, you just can't go into it. You can't just close your eyes and will yourself into that state of emptiness. No, it's a, it's a training that you have to uh, gradually develop over a long, long uh, period of time. Okay, friends, so uh, let's take a few minutes break and then come back to uh, to uh, get into the body, okay? Okay, friends, so <clears throat> start to stand straight, relax your shoulders and arms at the side. Feel your head balanced on top. You keep your chin level to the floor. Just gently close your eyes. Keep feeling the eyes and the sockets. While feeling the eyes, you should be able to kind of feel your face. You should feel your head balanced on top of the neck. Relax your shoulders. 
Feel the weight of your arms hanging from the side. Feel the clothing touching the skin of the body. Feel your hands and fingers. Or you feel the set of pulsations in your hands or fingers. Feel your feet pressing the floor. So you feel the height and the weight of the body over the feet. Now begin some deep, slow breathing to oxygenate the blood, to activate the life force. Take two or three seconds to expand your abdomen, rib cage, and upper chest. Hold the air in the lungs for two or three seconds. Give time for that oxygen to get out to the cells and slowly breathe out. You feel the last bit of air go out on the out breath. In the next in breath, Take a few deep, slow breaths like that, developing this mindfulness of breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. <clears throat> Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we're going to combine this breathing with these movements doing the movement while breathing in holding the position for two or three seconds returning to the starting point on the out breath and repeating each one three times the whole time keep your attention focused in on the body it's feeling the sensations generated by the breathing other body sensations just letting go of your thoughts, let your thoughts come and go in the back of your mind. So always just reminding yourself, just the breathing body, breathing body, sensation. You have to focus on the sensation. You don't deliberately do that, and your mind gets lost in its thoughts. On the next in breath, raise the arms over the head, interlock the fingers, turn the palms up, straighten the arms, stretch up, stretch the head back, look at the back of your hands, feel the sensations, release the fingers, the out breath, arms back to the sides, feel the sensations in the hands as you go down. Again, in breath, up, stretch the arms up, and then back a little bit, stretch upwards and backwards at the same time, feel the sensation, release the fingers up, breath. Once more, in. And hold that upward stretch longer. Bend back a little more. Release the fingers upward. Close your eyes. Start to feel the outline of the body. Feel the head balanced on top. the arms hanging at the sides, feet pressing the floor, Just feel the clothing touching the outer body, the 
those tactile sensations of the clothing touching the skin, the subtler sensations under the skin, pulse of blood or tingling sensations, the prickly sensations. Just remember standing, standing. Just keep thinking body, body, body. sensations and the next in breath lift up on the toes while raising the arms over the head in this way facing the hands toward each other and stretch up out breath come back down Feeling the sensation or if your mind wandering thoughts. Again, in breath, use the breath to help lift up the body. Stretch. Out. In. Close the eyes, keep feeling the subtle sensations, or feel the outline of the body. Or feeling the outline of the body, you can feel the sensations from all the different places very easily. You can get connected with the nervous system vibration. most direct way to be connected to the body. By repeating the word standing, standing that helps create the perception of the standing body, it helps to feel the outline of the standing body. It's as though you were looking into a full length mirror, just watching the body, standing, feeling it, not watching it so much, but feeling it. Letting go of the thought. Develop that singleness of attention to the body. Okay, next we'll do side bending using both arms. So on next in breath, raise both arms up. Keep your fingers and arms straight close to your head. From the out breath, bend over the right side as far as you comfortably can. With the hands and arms parallel to each other like railroad track. In breath, lift up. And the other side, out breath. In. Keep alternating sides with the breathing, feeling the sensation. So many sensations, stretch inside, breathing. Once more to each side.
and the out breath lower both arms. Just close the eyes and keep feeling the sensations and let the mind run off. Bring the head on top. Arms at the sides, feet pressing the floor. Standing, standing, standing. Feeling all those cellular vibrations, bodies comprised of billions of cells. They all live off of oxygenated blood, electrical energy. The more you can feel, the less chance for your mind to get caught up in thinking. Okay, next we'll do the knee bending. In the next end breath, again lift up on the toes, raise the arms up front for balance. <clears throat> on the out breath, bend the knees and lower down, balancing on the balls of the feet. Come down into the squatting position if you can. You take a deep breath, feel the muscles in the legs pushing the body up. Up on the toes. Relax. Feel the increased heartbeat, other pulsation sensations. So many different types of sensations arising and vanishing, zipping through the nervous system. Stand, 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 life force vibration. Okay, now spread your legs apart about three feet, wider the better. We'll do twisting from side to side with the spinal column, the lateral twist. Loosen up the vertebrae. We'll breathe in. <clears throat> from the out breath, twist to the right. Keep your eyes focused on the hand going back. In breath back to the front. Let your feet turn with the body, then twist to the other side. In breath. Just keep alternating sides with the breathing, feeling the sensation. In breath. Once more to each side. Okay. 
relax. Close the eyes, feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel the eyes in the sockets. Feel the outline of the body. By now the body should have become more alive with organic life force vibration, cellular vibration. Cellular interactions. Being centered in the life force of the body. The entry point to emptiness. Now place the hands together at the chest. Breathe in, hands over the head. Out breath, hands to the chest. Bend the knees, lower down. Keep the back upright. Feel a stretch in the hips and knees. In breath up. Out breath, arms to the sides, close the eyes. Feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel the hands and fingers touching the legs. Feel the clothing touching the skin. Feel the head on top, eyes in the sockets. Is this body exactly as it is here and now? Present moment, body-centered awareness, the descent into emptiness, letting the world of dualistic thinking, greed, hatred, and delusion behind. It's pure energy vibration. And now we're going to do the forward and backward bending. So keep the feet apart, the wider the better. And breathe in. On the out breath, bend forward. Keep the head up, looking out straight ahead. Keep the legs straight. Let your hands come to your kneecaps. Keep the arms and legs straight. Try to flatten the spine like a tabletop. Get a hump out of the spine. In breath, lift up. Move the hands under the buttocks for support. Let your head go back. On the out breath, gently bend backwards. Keep your eyes open. Feel the arch of the spine. Sensation. In breath, lift up. The next out breath, in bend forward, let the hands come below your knees. So keep the head up, legs straight. Feel that extra stretch in the spine and legs. In breath, lift up. Once more, the back bend out breath. 
Put it back a little more. Be careful. In breath. Out. The third time, let the hands come down towards your ankles or feet. Then hold on to your ankles or feet wherever you can reach longer and keep the legs straight, feel the stretch in the leg muscles, the hamstring muscles, let the little bones in the lower spine stretch out, little sensation. And lift up on an in breath. And once more, the back bend on the out breath. Just be careful. In breath, lift up. On the out breath, just relax your shoulders and arms. Feel the eyes in the sockets. Feel the outline of the whole body. Vibrating, pulsating. An activated life force. Now bring your legs and feet closer together. Just stand straight again for a moment. Just one last exercise. <coughs> Head turning from right to left. On the end breath, turn your head to the right. Or if you comfortably can, look over your right shoulder. Then you can keep your eyes closed. On the out breath, turn the head 180 degrees back to the left and look over the left shoulder. A little twist in the neck vertebrae. In breath back to the right. Just feel or imagine the neck vertebrae sitting up. Out breath left. In the right. Out left. On the in breath, let the head stop in the middle, the center, relax, close the eyes again, feel the whole body. Feel the clothing touching the skin of the outer body. Feel the subtler life force vibrations under the skin. Subtle pulsations, body warmth, tingling sensations, prickly sensations. And interior aches or pain. Present moment, body centered, aware, and connected to the sixth sense sphere. Right here, sound vibration, body vibration, mental vibration. Cultivate the awareness of everything is just vibration. Descent into emptiness. Go 
Okay, let's come back now to our seats. Just again, just feel the outline of the sitting body. Feel your head balanced on top. The arms hanging at the side. Feel the straightness of the spinal column. Feel the hands touching together. Feel the buttocks pressing the seat. Feel the feet tucked underneath where they touch the floor, where they touch each other. Try to hold that outline of the sitting body in the mind's eye. Just remember sitting, sitting. Just try to tune back into those vibrations you were feeling during the yoga exercise. And again, take some deep, slow breaths like we did in the yoga. Take two or three seconds to expand your abdomen, rib cage, and upper chest. Hold the air in the lungs two or three seconds. Feel the subtle vibrations of the oxygenating blood. And slowly breathe out. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Just take several more deep, slow breaths like that, developing this mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we're going to count the breaths from one to ten to develop a more continuous concentration on the breathing. Try to continue to take some deeper breaths if you can. Feel it more clearly. I'll do the counting for you. Just try to follow that with your breathing and counting. So with the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Hold the breath, feel the sitting body. And with the contracting out breath, also count to one, feeling the last bit of air go out. And the next in breath, two. Out breath two. In three. Out three. In four. Out four.
in five, out five, in six, out six, in seven, out seven, in it out it in nine Out nine in ten out ten. Now discontinue the counting, let the breathing return to its uncontrolled, shorter, irregular rhythm, but continue to feel it, to observe it. So it would be like a scientist looking down through a microscope, focused on the expanding and contracting movements of the breathing, it's knowing when the breath is coming in and knowing when the breath is going out, you know it by feeling it, Just letting your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Try to tune into the four phases of each breath cycle. The expanding in breath and the brief pause. The contracting out breath in the brief pause. During the brief pauses, or to feel the outline of the body, feel those subtle body vibration, nervous system vibration. If it helps you to stay focused, you can make these mental reminders of in, in, sitting, Out, out, sitting, just over and over and over again, in, in, sitting, out, out, sitting, breath by breath. Moment by moment, the gradual descent into the body, the vibrational body. The 
Be alert for thoughts trying to sneak in to distract your attention. Just let the thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Just keep looking like a scientist down at that experiment of breathing. Just in, in, sitting. Out. Out, sitting, so many different sensations you can notice, the touch of the clothing rubbing against the skin of the stomach, rib cage, your chest, your other body sensations coming and going in or around the sitting body. During the brief pauses between the breaths, you feel those subtler vibrations, vibrations of silence. Especially with the out breath, try to follow the out breath all the way down, the contracting out breath down to the end. Feel the last bit of air go out. And feel that brief pause before the next in breath. It's very powerful mindfulness, concentrated mindfulness. In, in, sitting, out, out, sitting, breath by breath, moment by moment, descending deeper and deeper into the vibrations of the breathing body. Try to notice how each breath is different, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, sometimes you feel the sensations in the abdomen, the rib cage, your chest. The pauses between the breaths may be longer or shorter, 
that are always changing. This is the scientific investigation. Present moment awareness. Catch the mind totally lost in thoughts, recognize it as lost, lost. Take a deep, slow breath, bring the mind back into the body, back to the here and now. Take a few deep, slow breaths, keep the blood oxygenated, help stay centered in the body. Noticing more and subtler vibrations. Deep in the body. Notice the subtle thoughts moving through the back of the mind. Our thoughts are just mental vibrations. Just cultivate that understanding that everything is just vibration, bodily vibrations, mental vibrations, hearing, seeing, smelling vibrations. Just floating through the expanded space of empty present moment of awareness. Mind is empty of everything except just vibration.
If you know what the five aggregates are, you can identify the aggregates as they appear in the mind. This is material vibration. This is pleasant or painful, neutral feeling. That's perception. That's wanting or volitional formations, thought. That's ego consciousness. Any thought of I, me, or mine. Just arising and vanishing moment by moment. Through that expanded awareness, present moment body centered awareness.
You particularly pay attention to how quickly certain sensations just arise and vanish. Body sensations, sounds, thoughts, just arising and vanishing very quickly. Just turn up the power of the mental microscope to notice more and subtler body vibrations. Thoughts, sounds, just coming and going through that expanded space of body-centered awareness.
Breathing in, sitting. Breathing out, sitting. So many different body vibrations come and go. Sound vibrations come and go. Mental vibration, thoughts come and go. Thoughts of I, me, or mine come and go. These are all just the, the five aggregates of clinging, arising, and vanishing, coming and going, and their nature of impermanence and not self. Just coming and going through that vast expanse of empty awareness, present moment awareness. Just touch that.
What thoughts arise based on that sound vibration? Sabe Sankara Anichati Yada Panyaya Pasati Otane Bindati Dukhi Esamagu Visudni Dukkha patta cha ni dukkha Bhaya patta cha ni bhaya Sukha patta cha ni sukha Untu sabi pipani no All conditioned things, the five aggregates of this body, mind, and world are impermanent. When one sees this with the eye of wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with suffering. This is the descent into emptiness. This is the experience of freedom. And thus spoke the Buddha. And may the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. In this way, may all beings live with mindfulness and wisdom. Thus spoke the Buddha. I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu three times slowly and do those, the chanting on a long out breath to feel those vibrations in your body and mind. So take a deep breath. So. Place your hands at the edge of your knees and take one more deep breath. On the end breath, stretch your head back. Look up at the ceiling, arch your spine, pull the hands on the knees to arch backwards. You lift the head up on an in-breath and on the out-breath press the chin to the top of the chest to stretch the neck vertebrae. The in-breath lift the chin up level. The out-breath relax, put a smile on your face. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
All right. Anybody, anybody get a little taste of what that sutta is talking about, being grounded, centered in the body, just feeling those vibrations? Yeah. Now the best practice to, to try to do that during the day is the M&Ms. Again, to stop every hour, what you're doing, just freeze in your tracks or between different uh, activities, jobs, errands, uh, you know, before rushing to do something else, turning around to go somewhere, stop. Just take a few deep, slow breaths, hold the air in your lungs as long as you comfortably can. So when you're here, holding the air in the lungs, really, you can't think about anything. And you just feel all those present moment vibrations of the body. And then let the breath out. Follow the last bit of air, go out. And again, that pause after the out breath, feel those vibrations. That's one of the most powerful ways of getting the mind connected. And, uh, you know, to that uh, state of deep body centered of present moment awareness really you know uh, okay so friends uh that will be enough for this evening's uh, practice and thanks for joining in and we'll uh, perhaps see you next week okay thank you, thank thank you, you everyone thank you Bante. be Bante. well be mindful be wise Thank you, Bhante. Unless the day keeps dukkha away, take your hourly M and M's. Unperturbable. <laughs> well, good night, yeah. everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Bhante. Good night.